I wanted to talk a little bit about the encoder and how it basically tells uh, posi uh, not position but like relative position for the real and it's quadrature encoding not a difficult concept but if you've never seen it before it might be kind of kind of new so to get a general idea um, Vero real eh, I don't really like green let's do blue looks kind of like this hope you have the uh, real cord comes out here you have the three plug coming through there and what I do what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a uh, couple sensors and putting it right here. And what that does, let me go over to the 3D model. Pow, kind of like this. So if you imagine this circle here is a reel, kind of like the drum. What it would do is we put a sensor here and a sensor there. And just to get some sense of perspective, the circumference of the drum is about one meter. The distance, eh, that didn't quite work. Let's click over there. The distance between the two centers, because we have two of them, will be about uh, 32 millimeters. So, or about, yeah, about 32 millimeters. And so we put one center here, one center there. These holes right here are just used to screw the um, holder onto the Vivero base. These two holes are basically screw the two optical sensors in. And optical sensors are um, basically infrared, shoot out infrared, receive the infrared. And if it receives infrared, it returns a one, no infrared, returns zero. So that's what we got here. That's right there. And we have wires coming out, you know, power, data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the basic setup where we're starting. So what happens is this reel, it's going to have some rivets on it. I'm using those just as markers and it will have 16 of them and then those eight basically divided again you'll get 16. so the distance between if it's about one meter around the distance between each of them is going to be about I don't know, 62 or so millimeters basically twice the distance of the um the two centers we have so what we have is what i did is i alternated black and white stripes and so if we draw it like that, oh, that is a terrible rectangle. There we go. Not good, but adequate. Black, black, white. Black does not reflect, white does reflect. And so when we have our two sensors, it could be, for example, uh, let's scroll down just slightly. There we go. So if we have our two sensors. They cover about half the distance. Let's say our first two sensors are right there. What they're going to see is they're going to, they're going to see, um, do this as a table, uh, zero, zero. Because they both see black, nothing returned. As it moves, the two centers might move to that position. It would then see zero, one. I'll do a little, there we go. So I go one. Then we might get the two centers both covering the entire white. That'd be one, one, because it shoots an infrared out, receives an infrared back. And then we might get two centers here, one on the white, one on the black. We get one zero, and then we get back to both of them on the black again. And so what happens here, that's going to be zero, 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 comma, zero. Quadrature encoding, meaning four, is going to be this pattern right here. And specifically, this pattern will show you uh, the direction of motion. It'll show you moving that way. I'm going to say this is clockwise, just because that's kind of the way, whatever, just choose something arbitrary. If it's not, you reverse it. So if you have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and this is the signal sent from these two centers right here, then you're like, oh, we did, it'll actually, I think it'd be 1 8, 1 8 um, clockwise rotation. So I don't know, what's that, like 120 millimeters? Um, basically, that's how far you unspool the reel. Um, yes. The other thing to note then is if for some reason you get one zero the other direction, one zero one one zero one zero zero, that's going to tell you that your motion was counterclockwise the other way. So basically, you can tell the reel is going in or coming out. I guess going out, coming in. Yeah, that probably makes more sense. 
So that's kind of the idea behind quad return encoding. Um, it feels kind of confusing the first time you do it, but then you look at it like, oh, I'm looking for that pattern. And if the pattern's reversed, then it's going the other direction. Not too bad. So we have that. One other thing I want to talk about, so that's how I turn, determine how far out the reel goes from, or comes back. The other thing I want to talk about is how you set the position of the camera. So I'm going to draw a quick picture of the fencing strip, which strangely enough also looks like my drawing for the quadrature encoding. Um, this is just going to be 14 meters. We'll do seven meters here. We'll call it half. And I'm going to make the assumption that our camera, which happens to look like this, is going to be perpendicular to the center. The issue is we don't know what this distance is right here. This distance from the center line to the camera, the perpendicular distance. And for the, for the camera to really kind of zoom in on where the fencer is, we should know that. So the way we do that is I have the reel right here. And there's two buttons on the reel. One is a zero, the other is set. The zero basically just means that when it's, you, you push, you have the reel cord attached to it, push the zero button, it does zeros. It tells you that it's at zero position. Um, if for some reason it gets off, which it might. Um, if you do a poor job with the tape, or the tape are the wrong sizes, um, it'll get off, which is why you want the um, tape to be about twice the size as the distance of the encoders. That way you get a solid zero, zero, one, one, et cetera. Okay focus. So the way we measure the distance, yeah, I just did blue. I just did blue. I don't like orange. We're doing blue. Um, is we take the real cord, we drag it all the way to the camera, and then we push set. So we know two values already. So first value here, this is hard coded in, is going to be seven meters. It's converted to position, which is, I don't know, like 180 or something, maybe. We have maybe 200. And this is basically like fractions of rotation. We're going to have another distance. I don't know. This might be 10 meters, something like that. You click set when it's pulled out this way. What that does is it gives you the, um, basically the adjacent angle, the hypotenuse, and then we know it's a right triangle. So from there, then we can determine this uh, angle. We can also determine this uh, Pythagorean theorem, this leg right here. Um, I guess it'd be convenient if I use like a three, four, five. I didn't. That's okay. We, we, we get it. So that can tell you what this leg is right here. So that data, so that's how you determine the position of the camera by dragging the real cord to the camera clicking the set button, that gives you the hypotenuse. The adjacent leg is known, that's, then you can calculate the opposite. It's all calculated inside the Arduino. That transfers the information over to the camera. The camera then gets an angle. So we take this angle then from the camera and we can, with math and trig, it basically tells us where we're gonna point it. So it can know where the fencer is, fencer, point camera this way. You're going to get an angle for the left reel. You get an angle for the right reel, and then it just averages the two. So it's basically like, if you're going to point at the left fencer, you're going to point at the right fencer. Instead of doing that, point halfway between the two of them. And this is how the concept works. Um, and that's pretty much all the technical concept between the, behind the, um, the tracker, the servo camera tracker thing. Um, seems to work pretty well. Hopefully this helped you uh, understand a little bit better. Enjoy.